Hello and welcome to yet another video. This is the first episode of the story in which Naruto is kidnapped during Sasuke rescue mission and gets taken to stars, later being raised by Darth Barris from Star Wars. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get the show started. Three years, three long years had settled over the residents of the village hidden in the leaves. Three long quiet years without a certain blonde Jinchuriki causing havoc with his pranks. While 85% of the village didn't miss the blonde at all if anything they were happy he was gone, the other 14% missed him a lot in terms of keeping their spirits up. It was that 1% that loved him either as a friend or something more that was torture and excruciating, the 7 rookies missed their friend, their senseis missed him as he inspired them to be more than simple teachers, the Hokage missed him, as her surrogate son lost and missing without a word and she feared the absolute worst. Above all pink-haired Rosette missed him a part of her dreading that she sent him to his death, that her lovable goof of a teammate had died trying to fulfill a promise to her, she made in a moment of weakness. She had revaluated her interactions with the masked, Tamari and Gara about his fight with the one-tailed Jinchuriki and found her heart both quick and an ache at the thought he went above and beyond his limits to save her. But that's just it, he ripped down those limits to save me because he loved me. The pain had been profound when she realized it, agonizing. And until she knew for certain he was dead she decided to charge forward making her own Nindo. I will get stronger and I won't stop until I can throw my arms around him and apologize to him for making such a stupid promise. That is my Nindo. When he gets back he and I are going to have a long talk about being a Baka. The remaining rookies in the Leaf doubled their training, all becoming Chunin with Neji being the only one to make Jonin at this point. But all in all the hidden was peaceful, quiet, but peace doesn't last eternally unless you are in the realm of the dead. Jaisa Wilsom had been born with a remarkable gift in the Force the ability to sense negative emotions. She had been brought up through the ranks of the Jedi to harness her gift to find Sith Imperial spies on worlds controlled by the Republic, trained by Noman Kar. That was until her gift had reached the attention of Noman Kar's Sith counterpart Darth Barish, he assigned Naruto Uzumaki to track her down, draw her out and kill her. Naruto however had other plans, he did the first too easily the last part he had no intention to ever do. Instead he seduced her to his side though it was simply opening her eyes to both sides of the equation. He pointed out how Noman Kar's actions were more Sith-like than she believed then proved it. She was devastated to say the least and angry beyond anything it was only by his hand her former master even alive. Her training under her new master surprising reminded her of her first master before Kar, he was kind, attentive, showed that being Sith or Jedi is not black or white merely a state of mind, you can be angry but also show compassion. You can be strong yet have knowledge, can hate but show love, be afraid but face it with courage. It was these actions and teachings that made her fall so hard for him, to love him with every fiber in her being and be so devoted that she didn't care if she ever left his shadow because it was a shadow filled with warmth and love. Pushing her thoughts on her past into the back recesses of her mind she focused on the present. She had the transport land a mile or so away from the village's northern gate so she and Vet could approach on foot. Ah yes. My future sister wife one of two I'll have to endure. My lord has so much love in his heart it cannot be contained to just one person, and with one of his boundless stamina it would be an insult. Though I wish he had picked someone who was far less energetic, and I can only imagine what this Sakura person is like. You are quiet? Ever wonder what things be like without him? Vet asked pulling out one of her blasters and checking the sights. Boss is something ain't he? Likely we would both be dead right now. You and Nagasa doused home myself at the hands of some stupid Sith looking to climb the ladder, we are both fortunate to be with Lord Naruto, Jaisa stated warmly at the last part. Yeah he's awesome, wonder what his home village is going to be like. I mean I got mixed signals when he talks about it, one minute I think he's going to go all Sith Lord on them the next he loves it, Vet responds twirling her blaster casually before holstering it. He's conflicted Vet, it was the only home he knew, if he had nothing there that he loved rest assured. He would go as you said all Sith Lord on that village and not shed a tear for them. But he does have be people cares for there, this pervy sage, Granny Tsunade, Shizune Chan, Kakashi Sensei, Gai Sensei, Kurunai Sensei, Asuma Sensei, among others. He has ties to them and people his own age. Jedi forbid attachments, Sith embrace them to a certain extent. Yeah, that Barish guy was really attached to a lot of things. Wish I could have attached a blaster bolt to his bloated ass, Vet snarked causing the normal reserved former Jedi to snort in amusement. Ah yes, I believe Lord Naruto loved to infuriate him before I met you, Jason smirked. Vet smirked a second before frowning, yeah remind me to mention time we got back from a mission on Drome and Koss. They both lapse into silence as the gate to the hidden leaf appeared. Better pull up the hood, 
Boss said they won't raise a stink bout my skin color but the leku will cause problems. Vet made sure the hood was nice and settled before checking her equipment. The former Jedi did the same mostly because she liked how she looked with it up. Your opinion on this third girl vet? Don't got one yet, exactly but based off of impression, she's lucky he's still got something for her, cause I'm liable to shoot her if she so much as closes a fist in his direction, got me, vet snarked again. I mean she may have seen him first but we got way more going as right. Well spoken, I'll speak to this granny Tsunade you just stand behind me and look like the gunslinger, my lord loves, Jace is smirking. Hey, you're only saying it cause it's true and you want dibs on him once the mission is done, vet snickered. It is my duty as his apprentice to service him, the former Jedi huffed. Just as it's your duty as his slave. Vet snarled slightly pointing at her neck, look no shock collar, I ain't his slave. I see so the last time you two were intimate it was role play, I didn't think my lord was into kink, Jace's eyes seemed to space out, her cheeks got flushed and her nose started to bleed. You really lived a sheltered life in those Jedi temples, the feisty Twi'lek stated. Tsunade Senja felt miserable had been for the last three and a half years ever since that retrieval mission, thankfully because of her influence neither had been put on the missing Nin list though it had been close. Donzo raised a massive stink over it and threatened her on numerous occasions to go to the feudal lord over Naruto and Sasuke going missing, Tsunade got fed up with it and basically told him to go ahead. The elderly man surprisingly backed down and she wondered why until Jiraiya pointed out to her that the feudal lord would have asked for inquiry into the reasons why both had been labeled missing which would have led to Naruto's parental origins being discovered and the motives behind the Uchiha massacre. In short I called his bluff and he folded. A part of me wants to do it anyway just to watch the man and the ingrates in this village squirm. She looking down mournfully slightly thinking about her cousin on her grandmother's side of the family. She had discovered her grandmother's journal shortly after taking off as how Kushina had been her niece and handpicked by the Uzumaki clan because of her chakra chains to hold the QB. She was a spitfire, Kushina you would have loved how that brat of yours turned out. Sipping some sake before going back to her paperwork she was interrupted by Shizune. Yes? Tsunade asked only mildly annoyed. My apologies Lady Tsunade it's just a couple people wish to talk to you, they say they have information on Naruto, Shizune stated softly. P.P. Lee send them in, the Senju woman felt stunned not even Jiraiya's spy network had located and they scoured over every rock looking for him. Even the Akatsuki's movement indicated they had been looking for him even going so far as to hold back whatever nefarious plans for the Bijou to look for him. Two people entered both very female one taller than the other. From what she could see from the shadows one actually had a dark blue skin tint similar to Kisame. Both had hoods drawn up to hide their features in partial shadow, enough to make out both were highly beautiful. Who are you and what do you know about Naruto? Boss was right she's really blunt, the blue tinted one stated. Yes he did state as much, the taller of the two produced a scroll and handing it to the female Hokage. Tsunade blinked a second before taking the scroll, noting the blue tinted one was looking around casually while the taller of the two seemed to be waiting. Opening the scroll she began to read, Hey Granny Tsunade, if you're reading this then Jason chan and Vet-chan got to you with no snags. Be good to them they are as precious to me as you and Sakura-chan. Anyway to the point, where I've been the last three years sorry I didn't write or send a dode summons to let you know. Been kinda busy training, getting into life and death scenarios that make the last three shinobi wars look like a schoolyard fist fight. If you're wondering why no one could locate me it's because I kind of got taken to the stars, if you need proof that I'm not crazy, ask Pervy Sage to send a spy to the hidden whirlpool right now or you could wait for me to show up tomorrow or ask Vit-chan to drop her hood. Tsunade paused in her reading to look up at the two girls wondering which one was vet though she had a vague hunch. Like I said if you need proof got three shots to get it, also when I show up tomorrow I'm bringing someone with me who will be kissing Sakura-chan feet if he knows what good for him the lousy team. I'm also going to be giving the pervert a swift kick in the ass for not telling me he was my godfather and leaving me to rot. If I find out you're my godmother I'll let vet chan use you for target practice for leaving me in the village. Also I know I've skipped out on I think 6 Junin exams so I want to make up exam your choice, even better I like to jump ahead and try for Jonin. So see you tomorrow, Vet Chan has a letter for Sakura Chan please see she gets it. Yours truly, Naruto Uzumaki aka Darth Wrath she took a deep breath and smirking slightly at the mention of Jiraiya getting punishment for his neglect. On would clear the room, these two are no threat. She somehow guessed the taller stoic woman wouldn't even flinch at the Anbu revealing themselves and vanishing but she still found it funny the shorter blue tinted one jumped. Clearly she's not trained in detecting stealth. Vet has her talents, Lord Naruto though does not care one way or the other. I am Jason Wilson, Lord Naruto's apprentice, 
and this is Vet, Jaysa introduced them. No surname? Tsunade asked. I got one in mind but he hasn't popped the question yet, so Vet will do, Vet snarked putting her hands behind her head. So what's up? Naruto indicated if I needed proof he went into the stars was to check out the hidden whirlpool, wait for him to show up tomorrow, or ask you to drop your hood, the female Hokage did smile slightly at the shorter woman indicating she wanted Naruto to marry her. So would you please lower your hood so I can see your face? Well Bantha Pudu, fine just don't have a heart attack old timer, Vit states earning a tick mark from Tsunade. The feisty twilight dropped her hood revealing her appearance. The female Hokage surprising didn't freak out looking at her as she would any potential individual. So no pointing at me and screaming, eek monster? No, outside of the things sticking out the back of your head you don't look much different than us, Tsunade explained. The blue skin? Jaysa asked. I've seen people with gray skin, purple skin, and blue skin plenty on my travels so the skin color while rare is hardly worth getting excited over, Tsunade smiled. Damn it, another 25 credits I owe that nerf hurt her. Vet groans readjusting her hood and Leku so her face was more visible. Anyway what did you mean about being Naruto's apprentice, the blonde Hokage asked. I'm learning the ways of the force through Lord Naruto, who has done the remarkable and mastering it in just under three years of training. So much so that he has earned accolades and become the youngest Sith Lord in history. It is an honor and a privilege to learn under him, Jaysa explained. I'll say I learned a lot under him as well, if you catch my drift, Vet waggled her eyebrows at Jaysa. You know what I mean? When he gets you to moan just right to make your toes curl. Vet found herself trip dropping to the ground. Hey! Must you be so crass, the former Jedi asked. Just saying, Vet not noticing Tsunade's incredulous look. So I got a letter to deliver to possible girl number three, don't suppose you know where I can find this Sakura Haruno girl. I'll have Shizun lead you to her, Tsunade motions Shizun who watched the whole exchange trying to keep a blush off her face images of Naruto plowing into either girl quickly causing the woman to turn red. Vet brushing herself off walking out. I take it she had a rough life growing up. Yes, Lord Naruto found a kindred spirit in her, in us both actually, while my life wasn't terrible I was used by people I thought I could trust, he felt the same in regards to your former master, Jaysa explained. Wincing Tsunade nodded, I've read Sarutobi Sensei's journals they don't peg him in a good light at all regarding Naruto. At any rate I would like to know more about this force, and what it's done to Naruto to make him strong enough he can actually teach others. But of course Lady Tsunade, my lord sent me here for that reason. He said I won't screw it up explaining it like he would, his words not mine, Jaysa smiled. The blonde Hokage chuckled, yeah sounds like something he'd say. Sasuke Uchiha had become more and more isolated and his training became less and less beneficial. Matter of fact outside the first year Orochimaru hadn't taught him anything instead simply encouraged him to use the curse mark while training by himself. Right be stupid and use the one thing that will tie myself more and more to you, HN. I don't think so, as much as I hate to admit it, Naruto was right. The Uchiha winced slightly even admitting that Naruto had known something more than he. Then came the secrets that had been revealed about himself and Naruto, first was the fact that Naruto was Jinchuriki to the Nine Tails, which would make sense considering how strong he became but that didn't explain the fight with Gara. he only used the Bijou's chakra to replenish his own and not to manifest it in any way to actually deal damage. Naruto fought Gara and won simply because he was trying to save Sakura. Which I didn't realize at the time was my problem I had no one to fight for, I still have no one to fight for. Regardless of what Sakura thinks I do not love her, at best she was my teammate at worst my annoying fangirl, same with Ino. The only ones that sparked my interest were, Tenten, Gara's sister, Kiba's sister, or maybe the Hokage's apprentice Shizun I believe. Keeping his thoughts hidden beneath the surface as well as his regrets making sure his facial features were neutral watching both Orochimaru and his butt buddy Kabuto like a hawk. He did befriend a couple of people in the underground, a fiery redhead named Karen whose personality reminded him of a female Naruto with Sakura's temper and insane fangirlism, then there was Sui Getsu who turned out to be another of Zabuza's apprentices before the man was driven out of the hidden mist. These two made being in this lifeless, blood-soaked underground bearable for the most part and. He was thinking of leaving to see one of them when his Sharingan picked up some highly faint but noticeable movement, if his Sharingan hadn't been active he would have missed the movement entirely as its chakra signature was masked on a level that screamed cage level. The fact neither Orochi Marvel or Kabuto noticed meant this masking was incredibly selective. I wonder the fact they aren't masking their presence to me means they know I have the Sharingan and don't care or I'm not the target. A second later he found out his two needle-thin senbone lanced out and struck both Orochimaru and Kabuto in the neck before either could react they dropped. 
Well that went better than I hoped, the pedophile and his ass hat dropped like two Janan. It is to laugh, a figure appeared out of the shadow dressed in a long black and red cloak, hood drawn up, armored gauntlets, armored boots, with two metal cylinders attached to his belt. Lieutenant, has the base been secured? Sasuke watched as a dark-haired man appear bowing at the hip and putting his right arm over his chest in both salute and reverence. Yes, my lord, prisoners are free with your compliments, as well as the other bases, the one states he refuses to leave on the grounds of his own mental capacity he fears he'll go into an uncontrollable rage slaughter everyone in his path. The dark figure raised his hand to his masked chin before nodding coming to a decision. Have the base turn into a small outpost and send a detachment of troops and officers to watch him and to keep him calm. If it's indeed a mental condition have our best doctors take a look at him no one should suffer like that. Understood my lord, it'll be done within the hour, the dark-haired man stated. Sasuke watched the whole thing giving the dark figure some grudging respect he overheard of Ju-Ugo from Kabuto and Orochimaru was a little surprised a complete stranger would help someone he only knew through a report. HN, I take it the hidden sound village is kaput. The dark figure chuckled slightly walking toward him pulling the two cylinders from his belt stepping between the downed bodies of Orochimaru and Kabuto who were still conscious looking up at the man. More like being repurposed, same with my clan's old home in the hidden whirlpool. Why Yuruzumaki? Orochimaru grimaced. Sasuke's eyes furrowed, wait Naruto had a clan. Yep, the dark figure crouched down. Shouldn't look so surprised we've met before granted I didn't look so badass as I do now. Three years changes people a lot, take me for example, three years ago that team rammed three Chidori into my chest trying to run away to this shithole. And Naruto? Sasuke stuttered out before taking a deep calming breath feeling more regret and a little amount of relief. Naruto lowered his hood and mask smirking slightly at Sasuke. Seems someone been doing a lot of soul searching haven't they team? The Uchiha simply grunted looking away deactivating his Sharingan. Fine. I'm sorry I put three holes in your chest and if it makes you feel better you hammer me into the ground and take me back to the hidden leaf. Naruto snickered activating his lightsabers making three pairs of eyes shoot to the two glowing blades. Now that is a sweet deal, I accept and now for the two loose ends. And considering they never been with a woman before I'm sure their ends are pretty loose, with a simple shrug he brought his lightsabers around in an infinite loop slicing both Orochimaru and Kabuto's heads clean off. Sasuke winced as the curse seal started dissolving. Watching Naruto walked up to him and punched him right in the stomach hard. The Uchiha dropped coughing looking up at his teammate who smirked, they're all even Stevens. As Sasuke slowly stood up a mountain of a man walked in, my lord, you won't believe this but we've found a member of your kin in this base. The whisker marked Sith Lord blinked looking surprised, well don't just stand there bring them to me, commander. The huge man motioned and two figures dressed in robes brought Karen who looked worried but unharmed. What's going on, who are you? Karen asking her escorts before seeing Sasuke as well as what was left of Orochimaru and Kabuto, she snorted crossing her arms smirking, well good riddance, to those two. Her eyes went starry running over to Sasuke. Did you kill them Sasuke-kun? Uck, my own kin a member of the Uchiha fan club, I can picture the Uzumaki ancestors rolling in their graves right now, Naruto stated looking mildly annoyed. The Uchiha however was a mixture of shock and annoyance, figures, now I know why she acts like you. You're part of the same family. Karen looked between Sasuke and the blonde hair and teen in black and red with confusion. Can someone tell me what's going on? Allow me, Naruto bowed slightly, my dear sweet cousin, I am Naruto Uzumaki. At your service, I also go by the title Darth Wrath, Sith Lord, I would say Dark Lord of the Sith but I'm not very dark. Why you're an Uzumaki but you don't have red hair or red eyes, Karen looking more confused same could be said of Sasuke. I know I inherited my blonde hair and blue eyes from my father, my mom was a Nuzumaki, Naruto stated simply. Commander bring the shuttle, I'm going to take these two to the main base so they can rest and relax, I also want reports on Itachi Uchiha's whereabouts by lunch tomorrow. Sasuke blinked as the trio walked out of the room, he looked back and was watching two of the robe figures sealing the bodies of Orochimaru and Kabuto away. I don't need your help Naruto, I can track Itachi on my own. The moment he turned back he spotted a scroll flying towards him which he caught. Opening it he noted it was a birth certificate, Naruto's to be precise it had the names of the parents blacked out but not the godparents. My mother was your godmother and Jiraiya of the Sanin was your godfather, that seems strange. I found out who my dad is when I lost control of my seal a year and a half ago, someone who was precious was nearly killed on a mission and I went fox, and I'm not talking like I did during our fight. 
I mean I almost let him all the way out turns out my dad seal a piece of his chakra into my seal so when it reached point of completely coming unglued he would appear and fix it, the trio reached the surface what shocked Sasuke and Karen was the sheer amount of troops and metal golems wandering around on the surface. A line of these troops stood between them and a huge metal thing was the only way for Sasuke to describe it. The trio walked toward this thing. Anyway kind of shocked the hell out of me to find out who he was. Orochimaru never said anything about it, but he seemed to know who your father was, Sasuke explained. Minato Namikaze, Naruto said softly. WW wait you're telling me your father was the fourth, Sasuke eyes widen. Naruto smiled sadly nodding, makes creepy sense now why I'm Jinchuriki and not just because I'm an Uzumaki. Also makes sense why Tuchi gave me all that free ramen growing up. Why? Sasuke asked looking confused. He was on the same team as my dad and your mom. The blonde Sith ascended into the metal thing turning back to the two, well come on this is a flying ship it won't bite. Both Karen and Sasuke stepped aboard looking around finding nothing but seats and two, men sitting in front. Set course for the hidden whirlpool, Naruto quietly sat down watching his cousin and the Uchi also take seats nervously. Why you said your title was a Sith Lord, W what does that mean exactly, Karen asked. When we have dinner tonight I'll tell you all about it, Naruto smirked. But let me say this. My three years made our fight at the Valley of the End feel like a schoolyard brawl in comparison and made the three shinobi wars feel like skirmishes. Sasuke looked at his one-time teammate and for the first saw something in those blue eyes made the Uchiha shudder internally. What did he do in those three years and if he wasn't in the Hidden Leaf then where? Sakura Haruno sat quietly at her station in the hospital going over reports or rather trying to go over the reports. To her it seemed like she had been staring at the same report for hours but this wasn't just any report it was Naruto's medical report that had been filed after the sand slash sound invasion. The list showed just how much he put into his fight with Gaara, how much he suffered to save her, a list of broken bones, chakra burns, cuts from Gaara's sand, severe chakra exhaustion, and exposure to the nine tails chakra, internal bleeding. The longer she stared at it the more her heart ached. He nearly killed himself saving me. And for almost a year I thought had been Sasuke, Okami oh what an idiot I've been. It might combust if you keep staring at it long enough, a voice stated causing the rosette haired girl to jump. A good foot, nice. Sakura turned glaring at the hooded figure, she was about as tall as her, a bit slimmer and her chest was more developed. Great another girl with bigger boobs than me, I really should have listened to my mom. Can I help you? Yep, the hooded figure had reached into her coat pocket and pulled out a scroll and tossed it to the rosette haired girl before leaning against the wall crossing her arms and legs looking casual, that's for you, boss wanted me to deliver it and wait for your reaction. Why he even bothers I'll never know, Sakura looked down at the scroll then back at the woman at the door after growing adjusted to the dim lighting showed a woman with blue skin, but remarkably attractive with annoyed expression. What never seen it while like before. S sorry, Sakura leaned back in her chair to open the scroll and read. Dear Sakura Chan, I miss you a lot, no that's not right. I miss so much it hurts and has been hurting for a while. If you're annoyed by that last sentence I understand and if you're reading this that means Vichan hasn't blasted it. So what I've been doing, well I've been training and fighting, training some more, going out on really dangerous missions and fighting being stronger than anything the Akatsuki can throw at me so their days are number, believe it. Also right about now I've just kicked Sasuke's ass unless he came with me willingly and will be home by tomorrow. So, consider my promise made in full sorry it took so long. And well I know you'll probably bash me for saying this but I don't care I'm saying it anyways, I love you. I mean I'm madly in love with you but there's a slight catch I'm kind of in love with two other girls, one you've probably already met, her name's Vet and the other is probably meeting with Granny her name's Jaisa, it's complicated let's just say I know I'm one of last of my clan and well I need more than one wife to, uh, revive it. Geez, I just know you're glaring at this paper right now. Sakura was indeed glaring at the paper. But before that she made other faces, shock, concern, warmth, happiness, a bit of winds, then came shock again only with a look of longing before the glare took hold. If you're still reading this at this point, without cursing at me. I want you to know I didn't intend for it to happen, but I couldn't help it. Jason kind of reminds me of Haku, Vet kind of reminds me of myself, and you remind me of someone but I can't figure out who, all I know is I see really sad eyes with all the love in the world to give me and I immediately see you. Please Sakura-chan give them a chance, give me a chance, that's all I ask. Love with all my heart, Naruto vet watched as the rosette girl's eyes teared up, and heard the sniffling, groaning internally. How does he do that, first me, then the Jedi princess, and now target head. I bet if he kept going he bag every girl in this universe. 
pushing off the wall the twilight girl walked over and gently rubbed the rosette-haired girl's shoulder. Easy there target girl, boss would be tripping over his feet trying to get you to laugh if he saw you like this. She felt Sakura stiffen. What did you call me? Came the stony almost menacing reply that Vet completely missed. Target girl, mainly because your forehead's so big I can paint a target on it. The blue-skinned Twi'lek froze seeing her rosette-haired competition for Naruto's heart turn to face her woodenly glaring. Ah, Budu, the Twi'lek backed up holding her hands up in a placating gesture. What was it, boss said she'd do if I insulted her on accident, oh right pound me into paste, like I'm going let that happen. Granted she didn't feel like it was an accident this girl may have been the first in Naruto's heart but she abused him and in her mind needed to win the right back, so the Twi'lek felt she was number one in Naruto's heart followed by the former Jedi then target girl. Drawing her blaster setting it to stun, okay let lay some ground rules, first I apologize for the insult, but I feel like you got it coming. Sakura glared at the girl but was put off by the strange weapon the blue skinned woman was holding. Okay, I accept the apology, now what's with the strange weapon? This is for protection, I ain't a physical fighter like you, the boss, and the Jedi princess, I shoot stuff, the Twi'lek holstered her weapon crossing her arms over her chest. Now for those ground rules, okay you accepted my apology that was rule number one. If you didn't then rule number two would be that I stun you if you didn't accept rule number one. Now if it was up to me, you and the Jedi princess would be left out in the cold. But if I do that then I'll be the one out in the cold. The rosette haired girl frowned slightly. Who's this Jedi princess? Sakura asked. Jaysa, the boss rescued her from her master, who was turning her into this weapon because she can sense if peoples are good people or real slime balls. Jedi are kind of like your world's monks, at least that's what the boss told me, Vit explained watching Sakura. Basically it's me, Jaysa, and you that the boss loves, catch my drift. So for me to be with Naruto I'd have to share him, Sakura stated slumping back in her chair. Yep, unless you know went with the Uchiha guy, it might crush Naruto a bit but Jaysa and I can pick up the pieces, we've done it once before when he found out about his old man, Vet stated sitting in a chair across from Sakura. Looking up at the ceiling the rosette-haired girl fighting down her racing heart. Naruto will be here tomorrow, I I can finally see him after three years. She paused her thoughts and found that the Uchiha hadn't even been in them everything was about Naruto, from what he looked like, to was he okay, to how much he changed. I'm over Sasuke I have been for two and a half years, Sakura explained she opened a drawer. How long have you been with Naruto? Hmm, almost the entire three years since he left here. You should have seen some of the stuff we got involved in, heck he even reunited me with my mom and sis. Jerk flirted with my sis a couple of times, Vet snorted remembering those times she wanted to pound him for them. With a sigh that Twi'lek focused again, some of things he did I wasn't a part of, but when he came back from those missions he looked like dead man walking, took everything I had not cry those times. Pulling out a decanter of sake and two cups Sakura poured them each a cup, please tell me I won't know what he did. Okay but not all of it was good stuff some of it was downright terrifying, especially with boss's Sith teacher Darth Barish, that guy was a real piece of work, Vet explained. With that she began to explain and through the tale Sakura bonded with a feisty Twi'lek. Karen Uzumaki was dumbfounded and speechless upon exiting the shuttle as Naruto called it, the ride was smooth and unless you looked out at a window you would hardly believe you were in the air. Top it off the trip was fast upon entering the shuttle, lifting off, and landing at their destination it took only 10 minutes. Their destination was a buzz of activity, people in armor, robes, armored robes, or dark gray uniforms scurried about with a frenzied purpose. It left her awed, her clan mate did what Orochimaru did only with respect rather than instilling fear. These people weren't loyal to her clan mate because they were afraid no these people followed him because they believed in him and his cause. They were treated with respect and got it returned in spades. Commander Purse approached her clan mate and saluted, she found this huge man. Was he clan mates go to guy in addressing troops, while Lieutenant Malave was his right hand in addressing everything else. My lord, the temporary command bunker, is ready holographic projector is up and running, and our spies in every village have reported in. Lady Jaysa and Vet have also reported in, they were successful in contacting the intended targets and eagerly await your arrival tomorrow. What of Lord Imperius and Ashara? Naruto asked as he, Sasuke, and Karen moved through the chaos toward this command bunker. Ashara made contact with the land of Spring Feudal Lady as instructed and she dropped your lordship's name. Needless to say Lady Koyuki was ecstatic to hear from you and readily agree to re-sign her trade agreements with the Hidden Leaf, as well as sign one for the Synth Empire here on this planet. 
she said it was least she could do for her country's hero and her number one fan. Lord Imperius has made contact with the feudal lord in Wave and the same thing occurred, Imperius also liked to inform you that they named the bridge after you. Naruto stopped turning to the huge man a smile lighting his face, really, wow, that's just awesome, he chuckled throwing his arms behind his head for a second. Sasuke grunted seeing a glimmer of the old hyperactive knucklehead he used to know and feeling a sliver of jealousy at the fact that Dobi had a bridge named after him. After a few minutes basking in that knowledge Naruto fell back into step toward the bunker. Any information from the hidden sound bases? Pierce produced a datapad and handing it to his lord, this is what's been complied so far, I expect more by this evening. Also emissaries have been sent to the hidden stone, cloud, waterfall, and mist regarding the Jinshuriki and the Akatsuki. The only Bishu at point currently that is off the radar is the three-tailed, the fourth Mizukage was killed three years ago and it's speculated the Bijou will reform in a few months. Naruto was scanning the datapad listening to Pierce's report, ever since being introduced the two had hit it off, granted Pierce's loyalty was strained at first but that slowly dissolved. He tapped the datapad's translator making sure what he was reading wasn't a mistranslation. Is what I'm reading true about one Orochimaru's experiments? Ah, uh, yes my lord. Everything is accurate right down to the DNA, Pierce stated wincing at his lord's narrowing eyes. What are you thinking my lord? I want Darth Imperius to accompany me tomorrow and have him bring Kem with him, when we confront that old bastard I want Kem to rip that arm off and feed it to the Warhawk, Naruto growled eyes flashing red and yellow. After a few calming breaths he handed the data pad to Sasuke, might want to read this and I think there was more to the Uchiha massacre than was let on. The Uchiha looked down at the digital display. What he saw made his blood boil and his Sharingan activate. Donzo and Orochimaru surgically grafted using Hashirama's DNA Sharingan on Donzo's arm and left eye, growling in outrage and horror at what was done to his clan and to Lady Tsunade's grandfather. If I known then what I know now, Orochimaru would have suffered a lot more for his part, Naruto snarled looking at the listed names of the Sharingan wielders. One in particular made the blonde Jinchuriki rage. He used my godmother's, your mother's eye, for that abomination. More rage bubbled up in the blonde Sith so much so he spun around extending his hands and let loose a torrent of Sith lightning into a tree shocking both Karen and Sasuke, causing them both to step away, Naruto's eyes turning yellow, after a minute the torrent dropped leaving the blonde Sith gasping for air. Sorry, went Dark Lord of the Sith for a moment. There's a difference? Karen asked. Yeah, Sith can be categorized in two ways, Orochimaru level bad in the way I am regularly. The Sith Empire as a whole are filled with people that make Orochimaru look like a saint. While others are pretty much shinobi-like and there is no clear definition between the two acceptabilities. Jedi are more the monks and samurai of the universe, they believe in peace and diplomacy, while Sith believe in war and absolute rule, peace through oppression, Naruto explained as they finally reached the bunker stepping through the doorway into a relatively decent sized room with a huge spinning lit sphere at the center. Ah, uh, you not going to follow that are you? Karen asked timidly. No I'm not like that, I'd be hypocritical if I did so, I help liberate spring country and wave from oppression I'm not going to put them back in simply because I'm part of a group that does. I've earned more than my share of favors to get what I want and my goal in life is to be Hokage, Naruto stated. Then what's all this? Sasuke asked gesturing to the bunker and outside. Sith Empire wants a listening post set up here, I stated as long as it doesn't interfere with day to day life for everyone living here I gladly set it up. I got the approval and came home. This place is the main base of operations until the listening post is finished. The listening post itself is being constructed in orbit, the blonde Sith touched the glowing sphere which dissolved into several dagger-like things floating with what appeared to be a circular object located in the middle of these daggers. The post is also going to be a refueling station and transit hub, this will also kind of cause our planet to jump 500 years technology-wise. If I wasn't seeing it I wouldn't believe it and think you really lost it Naruto, Sasuke whispered. Snickering for a moment going, back to the projector tapping a few buttons the projector changed to a huge man wearing cloak much like Naruto only his seam cast an even bigger shadow over his face minus the metallic mask. L Lord Malgus, this is an unexpected surprise, do what do I owe the honor? Naruto bowed to the shadowy figure Sasuke could practically feel the fear pouring off his blonde companion. How goes the construction? Malgus asked his voice garbled from the speakers on his mask. Proceeding on schedule should be finished by the end of the week, my lord, Naruto stated keeping his voice level. Impressive Lord Wrath, I'll inform the Dark Council and the Emperor himself at how quickly you've established things on your home planet. I imagine both will be pleased, Malgus responded. You do me great honor my lord, 
Naruto watched as the screen flickered and returned to the floating sphere. Nothing like having the Supreme Commander of the Sith Army make personal calls. Not someone you want to piss off I take it? Karen asked adjusting her glasses. Think of him as an evil version of my dad, and you kind of begin to understand how scary he is. Jedi have a fleet on site decree on him for a reason, only one Jedi fought him and came out of it alive and she was made the Order's Grand Master, Naruto rubbed his shoulder. Another reason I wanted to come home, I was getting way too close to high tier people in the Empire and the things I did becoming way too noticeable. HN, Shikamaru got it right things are troublesome, Sasuke sighed. Hidden Rain Village, deep under the walls of the hidden village resided the Akatsuki. Standing in a circle the nine members dressed in black cloaks decorated with red clouds stared at each other. Itachi what have our spies reported, have they located the Nine Tails Jinchuriki yet? Asked a red-haired man with purple rippled eyes. No, Naruto Uzumaki is still elusive, however our spies have discovered that Orochimaru and Kabuto along with the hidden sound have been decimated, Itachi had taken particular care in this information considering his brother had been with Orochimaru at the time. The spy couldn't get too close but from what he saw a massive force of men and women dressed in armor the likes none have seen attacked all the bases simultaneously as if they knew where the bases were and could coordinate over large distances. Not much else can be determined as the spy was almost discovered. Payne frowned heavily wondering who this new group were, anything else? Yes, their technology is by far more advanced than the Land of Spring, flying vehicles without balloons, heavily armored ground vehicles, and strange tube-like weapons carried by the troops. Also a group of the troops wear robes and appear only to carry these metal cylinders on their waist for what purpose I can scarcely guess at, Itachi finished his report. I find this troubling, Payne glanced at his constant companion. Is there any way to be granted an audience with the leader of this group? Thinking about using this army to track down the Jinchuriki? Kisame asked. No, however I would like to know their intentions, I want you and Itachi to locate their main base and possibly speak to their leader, Payne ordered. Both Itachi and Kisame bowed before leaving the others also followed leaving only Pain and Konan alone. It's deeply concerning about this new force, the spies only now finding out about this and only after Orochimaru was dead. It makes me wonder if this was intentional. It was intentional, made to be a warning and a challenge, very Uzumaki-like, Nagato whispered aloud. I thought you and the Jinshiriki were the only ones left? Konan asked. There is no telling how many are left, Nagato stood pursing his lips. Originally the plan was to extract the bijou and discard the bodies, the way our benefactor had planned worries me even more. You think he'll go after your Rinnegan? Conan asked looking nervous. Yes, he doesn't seem to have our best interests at heart, I've avoided staring at his eye after the last time and I notice my mind began to clear suggestion I once thought probable I now am appalled at. The original plan was sound, why change it? Extract the bijou and force the five shinobi to fight on equal footing. I would have restored the Jinchuriki to health using the Rinnegan and sent them home, Nagato frowned. Get word to Master Jiraiya I think it's time to seek his counsel and to let him know we are alive. Konan's eye twitched, if he ogles me I reserve the right to castrate him. Hokage Tower, Tsunade rubbed her temples after listening to what her surrogate son had gotten himself into the last three years made her worry even more for him. But she was also happy to know he had been showing remarkable leadership skills. She glanced at Shizun sitting back in her chair. What do I do Shizun, I have to label him something. Well considering he disappeared after the failed retrieval mission and you kept it quiet and vague to the council, you could simply state he went into hiding to keep the Akatsuki off his back while he trained to get stronger, Shizun stated. The problem is force that will accompany him, Shizun he's leading an army bigger than all five shinobi nations. If he had a mean bone in his body he could easily wipe this village off the map. The shinobi and civilian councils well the majority anyway wanted me to list him as rogue the moment we lost his trail, the busty Hokage groaned. He was family in every sense of the word, her cousin on her grandmother's side, he was her surrogate child, the one thing in her world that made things worth living and he had been missing for three years with no word anywhere to his location alive or dead. She feared the Akatsuki had gotten him only to find they were looking for him as well halting their own plans until he was found. I know, Lady Tsunade, but are you going to do? Shizun asked. First I'm going to get drunk, then when he shows up tomorrow I'm going to hug him, bash his head in, heal him, bash it again, heal him, then hug him some more, the blonde Hokage grabbed her sake. I understand my lady, Shizun giggled slightly. What about the councils? I'll let the brat deal with them, something tells me he got a lot of dirt on them and I'd hate for him not to get that shovel out and bury them with it, Tsunade smirked. Meditation one thing of many that both Jedi and Sith have in common. 
In fact much of the Sith are simply darker or cloudier versions of what Jedi do. Naruto has found that Jedi are simply samurai or monks with a different philosophy while Sith remind Naruto much of his old profession as a shinobi, only dark side Sith take it to Orochimaru levels of evil, light side Sith if you can convince a Jedi that such people existed were more along the lines of shinobi they had feelings, they fought to protect people, they ruled but they did it fairly and didn't oppress. It annoyed Naruto on more than occasion facing a Jedi and the space monks as the blonde Sith didn't see reason simply because he was Sith. The title of Sith or Sith Lord caused fear in a lot of people simply because it associated with beings who fell into the dark side so deeply anything less was a waste. Darth Barish had been a perfect example, the fat man craved power so much he did everything he could to obtain it breaking several tenets within the Sith Order. Problem was he got caught, Naruto felt if the man had succeeded the Dark Council wouldn't have cared. They simply would have accepted Darth Barish as the role of the Emperor's voice, simply because he played his part masterfully. Which pretty much made Naruto think about the first stage of the Chunin exam, gather information but don't get caught doing it, Barish did most of it but when the tenth question was given he didn't understand it for what it was and got caught in his lies. But at any rate meditation was one thing that Naruto was taught early on by his kidnapper before getting sent to the Sith Academy, a way to center yourself and listen to the Force, regardless of it being light or dark. It allowed him to see visions of the future or the past. Naruto had even seen images of the distant future long after he passed into the Force. He remembered three in particular that helped him cement his choice to love Vet, Jaisa, and Sakura equally. First vision, a green-skinned Twi'lek fighting alongside a Jedi, to Miralin, a large unidentified creature, and an astromech droid sparking rebellion during a very dark time in the history of the galaxy. Second vision, boy using the Force ripping the lightsaber out of a dark man that was only half of one the raspy breathing and cold voice piercing the boy's very soul. Later the boy becoming a man unleashing his powers on isolated Jedi in an elaborate plot issued by the Dark Machine Man to draw out rebels against his master's rule. Only to be thwarted by the secret apprentice and the man being made a martyr. Third vision, finally a beautiful redhead with piercing green eyes standing back to back in a dark room with a man as they bond tightly under the fires of battle, one blue blade and one green defending the other from unrelenting blaster fire. To watch something so beautiful being made Naruto's heart ache. The images had been burned into his mind with the last one being the most profound, he began recording his thoughts onto a holocron shortly after to give to these three when the time was right, if they were indeed his descendants from the three women that he loved he would ensure they knew about him and their connection to him. But it was long time in coming and he had more things to do in the present. Standing up and walking out of his quarters he moved with a fluid grace reaching the command bunker obtained some much needed caffeine along the way. Jason good to see you and Ashara, he received nods and smiles from both. Looking at the projector briefly, before going over some data of the hidden sound village. Lord Imperius I'll be heading to my home village in a few minutes, I would like you and Kem to accompany me, Sasuke, and Karen. Naruto looked up from his datapad. Sure, any particular reason you want to unleash the beast? Jason raised an eyebrow. A couple. First it'll put the fear of Kami into the shinobi and civilian council and the second I want him to rip someone's arm off literally, the blonde Sith tapped a few buttons on the datapad before handing it to his fellow Sith. That's his target, Donzo Shimura underneath those bandages are abominations that should never see the light of day, and I want him to tear into that full with extreme prejudice. Jason examined the picture and nodded, no problem, so how will we approach your old home? Naruto snickered, I thought the direct approach works fine. Have a shuttle land on the Hokage Tower. We walk down I'll probably get decked by Granny Tsunade then Sakura-chan before they both hug the stuffing out of me and Sasuke. What will Vet and Jaisa do? Ashara asked. Vet will probably give a rating on style points, and Jaisa will just roll her eyes at Vet's snarky comment, it's how they are, the blonde Sith chuckled. Naruto along with Jason gathered their group and entered one of the shuttles, lifting off heading for the hidden leaf, the blonde Sith was both apprehensive and excited. Hidden leaf. Tsunade was trying to contain herself by doing paperwork, if anything she had done more paperwork in the last hour than she'd done in the last three months. Why you may ask, it was to keep her from watching the clock or looking outside. She was a bunch of nerves waiting for the boy she considered her surrogate child or grandchild, though she loathed to admit the latter. Her nerves were getting to her and caused her to jump out of her chair when she heard and no doubt knew the rest of village heard a huge del roar like a bad fire jutsu getting set off. Jumping from her chair she spotted a grey and white vehicle with two lower wings and one dorsal wing approaching the tower and slowly descending. She placed its destination on the tower roof. Turning she noticed Shizune, Sakura, entering the room followed by Vet and Jaisa. Trust the boss to make some sort of grand entrance. 
I rated an 8.5 for style and a full 10 for shock factor, Vet snarked glancing at her Jedi companion who simply rolled her eyes but the mirth was there. Sakura turned raising a pink eyebrow, what about the flash? Oh definitely a 10, boss was always good at being flashy, Vet smirked which caused the rosette haired girl to giggle and nod. I think it's embedded into his brain, the baka. Sakura smiled as the five women left the office and rapidly ascended the stairs to watch as the shuttle slowly spun around and landed on three well-placed struts. The gangplank lowered and the first figure emerge, to the group was a bald man with a goatee and mustache combo with a single scar run down his left cheek. He wore long blood red and black robes, with his hood up, on the shoulder were enormous guards that ended in some wicked looking blades. At his belt was a single small cylinder that looked like the hilt of a fencing blade minus the guard. He had surprising gentle green eyes for looking so fierce. Next to descend was a woman with bright orange skin, a crown of some kind, and white tribal markings similar to those of the Inuzuka clan. She wore blue and black robes with two silver cylinders at her hips one looking like it had a bright crystal embedded in the hilt. The man gentle extended his hand to help the woman down the rest of the way. That's Jason and his wife Ashara, Jason elaborated seeing the questioning faces on the three Kunoichi. The two are close friends of my master and have done many missions with him. Jace's eyes widened slightly, I I did not think they would bring Kemval with them. The three Kunoichi turned their heads to see what was descending onto the roof, and what they saw made them shudder with fear. The creature was massive, with an ugly face, two beady eyes looking at them from underneath an enormous brow. Heavily muscled, wearing nothing but a loincloth, and carrying a massive sword that would make the seven swordsmen of the mist envious. It was by definition, glaring at them and simply walking over to stand behind Jason. R remind me never to get on that thing's bad side, Sakura whispered to Vet. Sure, problem is he doesn't have a good side, Vet whispered back. Fact the boss brought him here, means someone in this village really pissed the boss off. Sakura winced wondering who could get Naruto so mad he brought a monstrous hulk to deal with them. H he's not mad at me, is he? Vet simply rolled her eyes, please, he's so in love with you, me and Jay so we could kick him in the balls and he think we're being kinky. Blushing at the lewd reply the Rosette watched the next person to walk down, who was a girl with long red hair, wearing glasses, and had violet colored eyes, she was also wearing a gray uniform with the Uzumaki clan symbol on the left sleeve, she wore a sleeveless trench coat over the uniform and on the back was another Uzumaki clan symbol only bigger. She looked at them pushing her glasses up further on her nose scrutinizing. Tsunade groaned, the Baka is grandstanding. What you mean, Lady Tsunade? Shizun asked. Each person is coming down one at a time, he's going to make some flashy entrance I just know it, the blonde Hokage state rubbing the bridge of her nose. First Jiraiya, then Nanko, and now this Baka. Shizun, Vet, and Sakura giggled as the next to come down the ramp was someone the three Kunoichi recognized, as Sasuke came into the sunlight, wearing a wide open chested shirt, black Hikori style pants, and overly large purple rope tied around his waist. He also wore gauntlets and had a sword strapped to his back. He walked up to the Hokage and bowed slightly, I'm back if you wish to punish me for my actions in leaving the village I will accept your decision. Tsunade pursed her lips, the councils felt you were kidnapped or at least officially, I agreed to it on the grounds that Naruto be the one to retrieve you, hence why neither of you are really in trouble for being gone for three years. But I have a feeling the civilian council will raise a stink regardless of the fact that Naruto was successful. TSK, because. Naruto isn't QB, Sasuke responded then smirked hearing smoke bombs go off behind him. He's still Adobe at times. Turning he and the girls watching as a figure dressed in red and black armored robes walked down trying to look intimidating, his hood was up and the mask was over his face the only thing preventing him from truly being intimidating was the look of abject fear on his face. As he finished walking down the ramp Naruto found himself coming face to face with five of the nine women in his life that meant the world to him. One watched him with a good-humored smirk on her blue-tinted face, one was neutral as ever, one was shaking her head trying to keep herself from laughing at his expense, the last two though were the ones he feared the most, as both could probably beat him into submission, heal him, and repeat the process. The fact that Sakura hadn't hugged Sasuke was a bright point to him though. Maybe, just maybe she loves me as much as I love her. He walked up to them pulling down his hood and mask rubbing the back of his head. Um, sorry I was gone so long granny. It wasn't my fault you got to believe me. Tsunade grumbled at the granny comment but seeing him alive and well regardless of his annoying entrance, she threw all thoughts of pounding him into paste for worrying her away to pull him into a hug and relish that he was now in her arms again after three years. It's okay Naruto I'm just glad you're safe. 
Naruto nodded breaking into his cheesy fox smile with real warmth behind his eyes. He then turned to Sakura scratching his cheek. Um, brought Sasuke back as promised like I said in my letter and look not a scratch on the team's head. Sakura grabbed his cloak pulling him in real close, nose to nose, her jade green eyes. If you ever worry me like this again, you'll never get one of these for a long time, blinking in confusion before Sakura lunged forward capturing his lips with hers dragging the kiss out. Also you're taking the three of us out on separate dates. Not sure what was happening Naruto scratched his head rifling through his memories of the last minute before breaking into another huge smile. Yes. He nods not trusting his voice. After a few minutes of explaining who his companions were he then pulled out the datapad with evidence involving Danzo and showed it to Tsunade. Here you're not going to like the read but you're definitely going to like the outcome. Tsunade read through the information and the farther she got the angry her face looked, when she finished she was livid, that old monster. She screamed. Anbu. Suddenly ten men and women dressed in the Anbu Black Ops uniform appeared on the roof. I want the entire civil, shinobi, and clan councils in the council room in one hour if they are not present I want them arrested and sent to Aviki and tell him he and Anko are to have fun breaking them. Ashara leaned into her husband, thinking Dronikus would like to meet her, my love? Well she is spirited and he does love women with spirit, Jason chuckles. The Trushta woman smiled basking in her husband's arms. Only time will tell and if they meet. Naruto stated she has deep emotional scars. I'm sure the love of a new man could heal them. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.